welcome to the week nine edition of Coaches Night Out. We, of course, are live from Town Square Social, 145 Public Square, open for lunch and dinner seven days a week. And the Cedar City Brewing Company is now open at 112 Public Square, owned by Cody and Kyle. Same bunch that bring you Town Square Social. Check those guys out. They're now serving lunch, serving from 11 till 2, and they're open till 8 o'clock each evening advantage home solutions llc donnie self and rob painter kenny salas and the hometown team of keller williams realty thw insurance services llc cumberland university athletics dt mccall and sons lebanon carthage lafayette franklin and cookville make this program possible coaches night out is a show we've done now for maybe four years it airs on three Facebook Live platforms, including the Wilson Post, Main Street Preps, and Blue Devil Broadcasting. You can also find this show on Twitter at my Twitter feed, at TB Sports 85 and on the Main Street Media TV app. And you can go to your app store, pick up that app for free, Main Street Media TV app. Week nine of the high school football season, a light schedule. It's the second week of fall break for some of these folks around here uh, for Friendship Christian. I know it is. Uh, Thursday night football, Republic is at Mount Juliet on Thursday. That's senior night for the Bears. Friday, October 14, DCA at Mount Juliet Christian Academy. Friendship Christian goes to East Hamilton High School. That's a 4A school in Ottawa, Hamilton County. They'll play that game Friday night. Everybody else is idle. And while there's a world of football that we're going to talk about tonight, it has been a really big week for some of our local non-football teams. Lebanon and Watertown Volleyball have both won their respective region championships. Both teams will play Thursday in sectional matches at home. That's the biggest one I've seen in a while. Uh, <laughs> The winner of those sectional matches move on to play in the state tournament. Watertown will be at home on Thursday against Eagleville. Lebanon will be at home against Bradley Central. Uh, South Car Carthage last night, they beat York Institute by a score of eight to nothing. Watertown will take on Smith County in South Carthage on Thursday in the district championships. And again, in soccer, Mount Juliet and Wilson Central will play Thursday in the district championship. That game will be played at Mount Juliet. A lot, a lot of high school sports going on. Chuck Gentry, not really a man of leisure this week, but uh, the Blue Devils idle this week. Chuck, what has it been like being able to catch up on some things and not having to coach a football team this well, week? Well, it's been uh... – been good to sleep in late a little. Uh, my wife let me sleep in a little and I uh, got to take my daughter to school, pick her up. And I got to go with my dad to a doctor's appointment today. Got to spend some time with some college coaches uh, this afternoon. And, you know, it's uh, kind of good to get away from the stress and pressure and, and the, all right, let's do this. Let's hurry, do this. Got to do this and things and just take a little, take a little break and then, and, and be dad and husband and, uh, you know, just enjoy uh, enjoy other football other than Lebanon football. You needed this. Your coaches needed that. And I bet the players enjoy kind of being out of the routine a little bit. Well, uh, Thursday night when we got back, we had a team meeting, and uh, I, I told them a couple of things, and then I said, I'll see you Monday at 3 o'clock. And you would have, uh, you would have <laughs> thought that uh, – some of the eyes and expressions that I got, uh, but you know, it, it's good for all of us. Uh, you know, uh, I don't love taking the complete week off, but in today's age and time, the way the schedule works, and yeah, I think it's good for all of us to get away. And, and, you, and you've done that from the jump here at Lebanon High, mm -hmm. and so far it's been good. I mean, I'm sure there'll be a year where we don't uh, perform well, but I think Monday when we get back to practice, the kids will be upbeat, ready to go, ready to practice, ready to do the things. And we'll take a little longer in practice this week to, to, to catch up. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a good thing to uh, get their mind away from it. You know, everybody talks so much about the mental 
state now. Uh, it's good to get away from it. I know it's good good for coaches. It's good for coaches' families. It's, uh, you know, there's there's reasons that the NFL has bye weeks and, and colleges have bye weeks. So it's, it's, it's good to have one and uh, to get away from it. And maybe uh, when you come back to it, you, you, you appreciate it a little more. Is, is conditioning and jumping back in a weight room and getting some work done, is that paramount? Because you've had basically a week with nine days off. Well, I, I have told them, you know, don't sit around and do nothing. And, you know, they're high school kids. They're going to sit around and do as minimal as they can. It's nothing like – but uh, we will have some that have lifted and some that have run and some that have thrown and done some things. But, uh, you know, we'll get it back in on Monday. You, you know, with teenagers, it's kind of like riding a bicycle. They'll get it done. And, and – you know, some of those kids need the time off for the bumps and the bruises and the bangs. And, you know, uh, after uh, after a physical game like we had the other night, it's good to, to, to be able to say you earned this and let's, let's take a little time off. Let's dial it back to Thursday night at Mount Juliet. Non-region football game, but a game that both teams understand the importance of living in this community in Wilson County. Scoreless first quarter, Lebanon breaks through with a couple of touchdowns in the second quarter, winds up being a 27-6 to Blue Devil victory, second in a row over Mount Julia. Talk about the mindset of your kids in that football game, Chuck. Well, uh, we went into the ball game knowing that we had to tackle. You know, they've got a big running back, and then they've got uh, a speed guy, and then they've got one that's kind of shiftier. You know, so it, it – we knew that they were going to throw at us three different types of running backs. We, needed, we had to understand who's in the game and what each one of them do. And, and our defensive staff did a good job of preparing our kids. And our kids did a good job of preparing all week. You know, Andrew Hodge said it in the thing. Andrew Hodge didn't get any stats on Friday, on Thursday night, but he deserved a lot of that credit because he, he, he was the scout team running back and, and we were, we were going at it all week. And, uh, Monday and Tuesday were really physical days, and, and uh, you know, uh, that was the key point. Tackle, tackle, tackle. Keep making them get back in the huddle. No long ones, no and, – and and for the most part, we, we did that, except one or two long passes there when they uh, – you know, when we busted the coverage. But besides that, you know, we felt like uh, defensively we played pretty good. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, two or three turnovers that they had, we had none. Uh, felt like we played pretty good in the kicking game. And then we were able to uh, – we felt like that they might play us two high safeties. And when we did that, we – Don't try for the big one. Don't – you know, and, of course, we took a, a shot or two that, that you know, didn't, didn't pan out. But – you know, it, we, we were able to let Jalen dump it to Anthony and Anthony make plays because we had cleared it out through uh, through, through Nolan. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where we felt like what we asked our kids to do, what we prepared for, what we practiced for, Friday night all came into – or Thursday night all came into tail. And then, you know, it's fourth and one there in the first – second quarter. And uh, we uh, bobbled a little bit there and – go to fourth and six, and so uh, I knew that when Anthony Crow touched the ball, everybody in the stadium would think, well, he's running it. And uh, I, I told him, you just go be Anthony Crow and you do what just what you practiced before. We've had it in the game plan, uh, you know, the two or three weeks before. The half just didn't, pass, just yeah. didn't run it. And so when he, he actually performed it better on Thursday night than he had any other time. So uh, – you know, he made a play, and then he made Jalen made another nice throw to him in the in the corner. Something else that we talked about: if we get in a flanker set to run the football, if they put anybody out there other than number six, we like our matchup. We like our matchup with number six, but you know, maybe didn't want to try it at that point. But I told Jalen, as soon as we see it, we'll throw it. And so we got out there and saw it, and uh, he was ready for it. Jalen made a nice throw, and Anthony made a good catch. Laid it right on the money, and Anthony goes up and makes a great play. Right. And, and, you know, that's the kind of things that he can do. You know, Jalen put it 
in a in a great spot where really only he could get it, you know. And, and Anthony goes up and gets the gets the toe tap and and is uh, you know, puts us up fourteen to nothing and give us uh, some cushion to go in at halftime. And receiving the ball, we felt like that you know we we if we controlled the clock, everything should be fine. Sean Heath, one hundred and seventy three yards rushing, scored a touchdown. 29, 28, 29. 29 carries. And Bobby K had a picture that we ran big on page two of sports of Sean breaking through, and there's a gaping hole. He doesn't run the ball that well if that offensive line doesn't produce for him. Well, we, the offensive line tied in sniffer, and then we did some stuff motion-wise with Anthony and Ruben where they were kind of – moving their coverage a little bit. And then once he got past the first level, you know, he had some angles to, to get through there. And, you know, sometimes, you know, there's the, the, the best run of the night, he makes a guy miss in the backfield yeah. that, that comes off on the stunt and then breaks four or five tackles and then goes down the sideline for a, for a, for a huge gain. And, and to be honest, that's all a lot of it is Sean Heath, nothing, nothing anybody else done on that play, but then there's times where he's getting to the second level and not getting touched and and going. But uh, Sean's a good running back. Runs hard. Got good vision. You know, as you can, you saw at times they were picking him up and he still had two hands on the ball, protecting the ball, doing the things that you want running backs to do. And uh, you know, I felt like he kept getting better the more we gave it to him. And you know, that's a positive sign. And and I felt like our offensive line, uh, you know, kind of settled in because they were giving us. They give us on the first series three different fronts, and so uh, you know I I felt like we kind of dictated later on. All right, they quit giving us so many. We got in this set, we got this, we got, and then then we kind of settled in. But uh, with the whole deal and then playing two safeties and us being able to control the football, you know we felt like uh, you know it's a good recipe to just let's just who cares how many points we score, who cares how many yards we have. If you can milk 40 off that thing every time and you got the lead and you keep hammering it, you'll be okay. That last possession where Sean scored that touchdown, I want to say you gobbled up a huge chunk of that fourth quarter. Maybe took over with eight minutes to go and, and ran that thing down to a couple of minutes to go in the football game. Well, uh, you know, I get, I like to go fast. I, you know, I like the tempo and I like that stuff, but, uh, you know, I also like to be able to line up and hammer the football. And when you're getting positive yardage, stay above the chains and, and just just be able to do that. And, you know, uh, with Jalen and Anthony, we kind of took the ball out of their hands. But, you know, I, I, I told them all week, I said, it depends on how they play us because, you know, they may play us one high, they may play us two high, they may play us straight man. I don't know. And we'll just have to see how it goes, and that's why – you know, offensively, we do a lot of stuff and a lot of different things, and you never know what's working. You know, I, I felt like early in the game we should have moved the ball more than we did, and we weren't weren't patient enough or we're in too big of a hurry to, to, to do things. And, and we had some things that we left on the field. You know, we felt like we dropped a touchdown pass, and we dropped another one on a, on a screen pass that was, was going to be big. And uh, But, you know, the, the, the game and the situations dictate a lot of that, and uh, – we went into the game saying, let's run the football. If they give us this, they gave us that. And so, uh, you know, most of the guys on their staff, especially on the defensive staff and the guys that's played for me, like run it, just keep running it. And, and you know, our, our goal was to con control the clock and, and try to be the more physical team. And, and that's, that's what we set out to do. And, and, you know, anytime you have a guy that runs it for 29 yards and 170-something, 29 carries, 170-something yards, you know, it's a good night. Defensively, according to our stats, you held Mount Julia to 31 yards on the ground. Now, their quarterback, sophomore, completed a high percentage. One long one where it looked like Lebanon maybe had a chance to pick that one and didn't. But bottom line, you control the ground game. And if you could keep that Mount Julia trio of running backs to 31 yards net, what a night. Right. Well, it was like I said. We we set out all, all week to stop them run, and, and they've had, you know, they've got a good football team. Oh yeah. And and, and are gonna, you know, they they run the ball against everybody they play. Uh, we felt like we wanted to make. Don't let number seven get rolling. Don't let number thirty four get outside and bust a big one, and then make them run it between the tackles where Stonewall Jackson's in there, 
you know, eating up blocks and, and, and where we're, you know, where we're stacked and it's hard to block is don't let them get to the edge. And, and if we could do that and run the football ourselves, then, you know, it's a good recipe. And then, uh, you know, uh, bend but don't break, you know, and put pressure on the quarterback. And, you know, there's, uh, you know, the one that he threw in the middle, uh, you know, we should have uh, had an extra guy there. Won't call anybody out, but he know he, you know, he's sitting there. Part of the deal was he's playing run, so he's still playing run when he should have been playing underneath to make him throw it over the top a little more. But to, in all in all, uh, pretty good night to just just give up six points and you know whatever how many yards rushing it was to to be able to to, to bend sometimes but don't break. When when you take a look at the fact that you were able to force some turnovers, the takeaways, and I, Terry Stafford is our stat guy, and he's done stats for coming up on 400 games for Lebanon High football. He said there have been seasons with much better offensive numbers. He said, but Lebanon does not turn the football over. Knock on everything <laughs> around, but plus – plus nine and give away takeaway. Again, a winning formula, high school football, don't turn it over. More games are lost than they are won. Well, I think I told you last Thursday or last Wednesday, whenever it was we talked, the three things, the keys was would be special teams, tackling, and turnovers. And, you know, we uh, had a one thing where Key Crowell wrestled one away from – from somebody underneath the bottom of the pile, which I actually I was saying on the headset, I think they got it. And then uh, you know we had a had another one where uh, uh, Stonewall Jackson, you know, interception there, and I forget what the last one was the the, the reverse yeah. where Binker jumps off. You know, those are three you know three changes in momentum, short field, and and then again. Sean Heath and the guys running the football, taking extreme care of the football, having two hands on it when it's done. And then Jalen Abston being smart enough to uh, know when to throw it, know when to run, know when to uh, dump it off, not not fit it in windows. There's times when I want him to fit it in windows that we have coached him. I take care of that. That's our baby. Take yeah. care of it. And 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 so he he listens and doesn't do that. But uh, you know for. Uh, you know, like you said, the recipe is if you're not turning it over and they are, odds are usually in your favor. Abston, I thought, again, had a had another solid game. You ran him some designed runs. Some were pass run options where he decided to pull it down, take off. He he slid some to avoid the big hit. The the maturation of Jalen Abson from a ninth grader to now has has been amazing in this offense. Huge. You know, he had uh, two weeks there where he didn't play well, took it upon himself and, and wanted to get better. And when we coached him hard and, and do, and, uh, you know, he is a good runner with the football. Uh, you know, he's a physical runner. He finished a couple of those too. Uh, oh, yeah. When, when I – Wanting him to maybe get out of bounds and get down, but he's he's that type of competitor, and uh, you know he's more comfortable probably running it than he is throwing it. Yeah, if, if all truth be told, but you know we want him to uh, we want him to take care of the football, and, and you know there's times where he throws it and you know he puts it in, you know he can't walk it to him any better, and then there's times where you know if it's not there he'll take off and run, and and there's times when he can do either. And, and, and we let him do that. And so, you know, but, you know, I, I'm very confident in the decisions that Jalen Abston makes, uh, whether it be to throw the R, pre-snap RPOs, the post-snap RPOs, whether to hand it and do it. You know, uh, you know he, he wanted there early in the fourth quarter, let's go score some points. Once he realized, all right, Coach Gentry's, you know, he's taking that thing down and we're snapping the ball with, two, three seconds, yeah. you know, and, and, and he understands, you know, he understands right, that's, it's no more going fast, but you, you got, once we got down there, we got down to the whatever one yard line 
and we jumped back in. We'd been going slow the whole time, jump right back up and go because as soon as we snapped it, he turned around and started, let's go. And so, uh, you know, I, you know, a lot of times I tell him, I trust you, you know, we're going to try to make you comfortable. So I said, all right, let's go. Let's just run it again. And so, uh, but, you know, huge, huge confidence in him and his leadership abilities. And, uh, you know, we've seen that for four years now and, and he, he gets, he gets better to me every game and he understands more every game. Talk about the crowd support. What a, what a mob on that Lebanon side the other night. Well, uh, you know, I, when you being Thursday night and fall break worry, you know, you worry about the crowd and then, you also know in that type of environment what type will you have. And then uh, when you go up there and they're on the hill on the left, then there's standing room only in the crowd and the student section is there. And then it's a wrapped all the way around. And, and you know, when you walk out and 95% of those people have got on blue and white and, 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 and are our people and are excited. And then uh, uh, I told my coaches and – one of the timeouts, you know, I said, I'm tempted to turn around and get this bunch really fired up. And I said, but we've got the football and I yeah, want them to be yeah. quiet. I said, because their bunch is silent. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's a it fun, night, fun atmosphere. You know, they uh, throwing baby powder and playing with the teddy bear and, and all that stuff. And then, you know, it's what makes high school football fun, the rivalry. And, you know, been like we discussed, been a long time since we've been over there and won. And to, to, to go to a place where they've got a good football team, good tradition, and, and win on the road on Thursday night before fall break, you know, there was a, a lot of excited and, and happy people. And, and not to mention that the, the game was covered by, you know, the Tennessean and, and 615 preps. And uh, there were two or three others there shooting videos and stuff like that. And so it was a good atmosphere and a big night for a football program. Before we get gone, a couple of things I want to talk about. <clears throat> No team meals this week because the team is not gathered there. They're on their own for meals. But Shop Springs Creamery has provided chocolate milk through the generous help of Family Medical Associates and Pediatrics. Shop Springs Creamery, the official chocolate milk of Lebanon Blue Devil football, and the book project, which, again, that takes a week off and some character time directed by Darren Reynolds, sponsored by Partlow Funeral Chapel, John Greer State Farm, and Sellers Funeral Home. Once you get back into your routine next week, all those things will fall back into place. We'll start right back with uh, chocolate milk on Tuesday, pregame meal on Thursday and Friday, book on Thursday. And uh, Brother Darren's probably the one that needed the time off as much as, as, as we do, but uh, – he did tell me, he said, I ain't answering many phone calls, but if you need me, I might answer yours. But uh, I think him and his family have had a good time uh, at the beach or, or wherever they went. And, you know, it's like I say, it's good to get away and get a little family time when you, when you can. Uh, you've had some college coaches visit you about some of the Lebanon kids. Mm -hmm. That's an ongoing process, isn't it? Ongoing every day. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Angel works hard on getting her kids uh, – videos together this week we've tweeted out Jalen's and and anthony's and then eli freeman aiden donald stonewall jackson uh they're all in the mix of, of doing different things and then uh some others you know nolan sandifer uh david alluya some of those guys are getting people to uh to look at them too so we've got uh, we've got several that are uh um have the opportunity to play at the next level. And, and like you say, with the transfer portal, you never know what's going on with recruiting anymore. So it's very, as the coach said today, it's a very, very fluid situation. And he said, sometimes we don't know because the head coach don't know. And so, uh, you know, it, it, it's hard on high school kids. It, it's, it's Because it's, they are, are really at the bottom. They're of their at the bottom of the food chain. And unless you're a four-star, five-star, and you, you, you know uh, most of these – OBC level mid majors, uh, you never know what's going on. You never know if, if people are transferring down, people are transferring out. Uh, you, you just never know. So it's uh it's an ongoing process, something that you know it's new. We're learning about it every day, but trying to do what's best for our kids. Chuck, always great to have you in for a visit. We appreciate it. Chuck Gentry, head coach with the Blue Devils, here on this segment of the week nine. 
Coaches Night Out live from Town Square Social. We'll be back with more right after these words. Coaches Night Out, live from Town Square Social. A couple of things I want to touch on. If you're a Blue Devil fan and you want one of these shirts, proceeds go toward rebuilding the locker room, renovating the locker room at the field house at uh, Tribble Field, Watkins Stadium. You can see Coach Earl Berry, Tank Berry. He's on Facebook. You can come to practice next week. He's He's got these shirts with him. If you contact him through social media, and they've got them in – multiple X sizes, which I needed, you can contact Coach Barry, and he will hook you up 
with a shirt. And then one more thing we want to talk about, the Omega Project, the Wilson County Omegas are uh, sponsoring a uh, blood drive that's going to be in November at Cumberland University's Baird Chapel, Tuesday, November 15th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Share your strength, fight sickle cell anemia, and they need blood donors. Keep that in your mind. We'll have this on social media. You can go to Wilson County Omega Project, Instagram, and on Facebook for all that information. And I mentioned the T-shirt, and as the weather has turned cool, with the, the Earl and his group also have these cool beanies. Uh, keep your ears warm as uh, football season turns a little bit cooler. Coaches night out. Town Square Social. 145 Public Square, Advantage Home Solutions, LLC, Donnie Self and Rob Painter, Kenny Salas and the hometown team of Keller Williams Realty, THW Insurance Services, LLC, Cumberland University Athletics, DT McCalls, Carthage, Lafayette, Lebanon, Franklin, and Cookville. They're our sponsors. We appreciate their help putting this show on. Tim Mathis, head coach at Cumberland University, with me here in the second segment and the record setting Phoenix from last Saturday when they got off and got going against Campbellsville, a 65-22 homecoming victory over Campbellsville at Noakes Lassiter Field. Tim, it was as if the dam broke and things were on. You guys were rolling. Yeah, finally. I I don't know if we had a beaver infestation or whatever we finally busted the dam and got things going and it's you know it was relief in knowing that that's what our offense is capable of doing and you know you you put that together with how well the defense are playing and they kept giving us the ball back to the defense did and it just it, it you know it, it felt it felt good just to finally have a game where everything was going and you weren't playing against a bunch of dead guys. No. Campbellsville came in. They had three wins under their belt. They had struggled in the Mid-South Conference. But they they certainly were not, as I said, they weren't a bunch of dead guys out there. You guys played awfully, no. awfully well. I mean, well. They, played, uh, they played Lindsey Wilson, who's the number four team in the country. Lindsey beat them 12 to 9. So, you know. They were playing really good football. It's just it, it was just a matter, and, and the way we look at it, it wasn't, you know, they play bad or whatever. Just we play like we were capable of playing finally, and that you know that's all we've been harping on the last couple of weeks. Anybody, let's let's get Cumberland better. Let's you do obviously you got to scout the opponent. You got to you got to do the things against the opponent, but let's just make sure we're doing what we need to do right. And it it did. It was it was just you just kind of sit back there. I know it was kind of six or seven minutes into the second quarter, and I'm like, God, is this quarter ever going to, you know, is it ever going to end? And and everything just kept going right. It didn't, you know, you have a deflection for a long touchdown pass. Everything went right, which you need one of those finally have that happen to you. You know, finally luck goes your way a little bit too. So I was, spoke to Jalen Taylor after the game, and, he had three touchdown receptions in the first quarter and different routes. Uh, one was a hitch, one was a go, and he said one was kind of an adjustment that Coach Quarles and, and Holloway and he had talked about, and he said it worked. He said what he told me, he said the biggest thing, our offensive front gave us time to do our thing, and that has been – that that has been coming. It has and been. It, it finally and got we hit. did, and we tweaked. Uh, Will Sanchez got his first start at. Uh, we moved uh, Ronaldo from tackle to guard, and put Will Sanchez out at tackle, and that seemed to, you know, for that this game, it seemed to maybe what clicked and and gave us time to do all those things and just. You know, we were opening holes left and right for the run game as well. So, you know, you know, maybe we found the right way the Legos are supposed to stick together or something. And but, um, you know, they play. We play extremely well up front to 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 do what we did. And um, 
you know, almost 700 yards of offense, and, and it, it it does go up to those front front guy, guys up front because if that wouldn't have happened, we wouldn't have had that. Yeah. We'd still have been struggling, but it was if we could just, you know, I know we've said this on this show a bunch of times. We just give our guys a little time, a little space, you know, running backs a little space, great things are going to happen. Two backs over 100 yards. What what a gravy train those guys were on. Yeah, and 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 just you know an opportunity. And Nick Burge hadn't gotten much of an opportunity to run. And ten rushes for 118, you know, 11.8 yards of carry. Traylon had ten or eleven yards of carry for a carry and had 140 something yards. And you just everybody would put in there. Uh, JJ Jarius Johnson had uh, some nice yards. Uh, receiving two, and then there at the very end, we put uh, Carson Posh in the game, and he, he had some really nice – I think he averaged eight or nine yards of carry just to, there in the fourth quarter. So, um, we give our guys a chance to run. You know, some good things are going to happen. The confidence factor from finally being able to say, this, this thing is working. Now, you look at it on film. You've had days of practice – when, when you go back over this, I'm sure there are lights going on in these guys' heads saying, hey, that's the way it's supposed to work. Right. It, it is. I mean, that's the thing you point – you purposely point that out in film too. Is, you know, this is this is what it's supposed to be like. This is – and then they're still in, you know, when you watch films too, even though you, you score 65 points, there was a lot of – there still was a lot of cleanup stuff to do too, which is, which is also not a bad thing, it's, you know, just – keep some more focus and you know we could have done better um it's, it's kind of hard saying that when you put that many points and you have all this offense but there was a lot of things that we could have done better and it's the same way on defense there was a lot of things we could have done better on defense you know we're always going to strive for on defense is to quit giving up the big plays and and they had a couple camels had a couple of big plays and we just think defensively if we make them drive the whole field we don't we don't think there's anybody that can just drive down the field on us. So, um, got good lessons to learn in it and great film to say this, like you said, this is what it's supposed to be like. And to have that kind of game, homecoming, Mid South Conference game with a huge crowd on that home side. What a, what a, jolt of energy was going through that well, crowd. The big and the biggest thing um to me about you know the homecoming too is you you get all our old guys that that play to come on before all all the old bulldogs or the Phoenix that, that used to play for us to do that well in front of them too all you know it makes you stick your chest out too because it, it lets you point at them like Listen, we're, we're carrying on your tradition. We're carrying yeah. on everything. So it was good for that, too, because you do, especially when all, you know, your older guys come back, you want to make sure that you show them that we're playing as hard as you did. And you did it in front of a bunch of recruits as well. Right. We had a huge uh, – we probably had 45, 50 kids there. So it was a big recruiting day for us, too. And to put that show you – know, that can only help in recruiting when you put that kind of show on for those guys. And you cast a large net for recruiting. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want a lot of people to be exposed to Cumberland football, to come and see what it's all about. And I'm sure a lot of them came away maybe having not seen you play before, pretty well amazed by what what went on. Right. And that's, you know, that's obviously what you want to do every time because I think I do think with the way we do our recruiting and they they get the campus tour and the campus experience and then being able to be in the end zone during pregame and, and, and walk around and feed them and all that, I think I think we probably do as good a job as anybody in the NAI of, of giving them a great recruiting experience because, you know, that is your one chance you have them on campus. Sometimes the only chance they're going to be on campus. So you want to try to hook them in that moment uh, because, you know, at the end of the day, recruiting, you just – you want them to want to be at your school. You want them to feel like this is a place I want to be at. When you 
I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think here. I lost my train of thought for a second. It, it happens as, as one gets older. <laughs> that uh, bringing, bringing all those kids in there, uh, the, the pipeline that you're trying to establish, Middle Tennessee, and I know you've got a, a good recruiting base in Georgia. Uh, a, a lot of kids come in there, and it, then it allows the coaching staff to kind of weed through there and, and see what do we need specifically to, to build this program. Because, again, we've talked about this before. Your two deep is still very young. It is. It's specifically, young. you're going to need just a few little things, right? Right. It is. And, and you know, our recruiting philosophy big time, but kind of going back to what I just said, they got to want to be there. We want, we want more than the majority. We want, 75 to 80 percent of our kids to be from 75 mile radius yeah. of, of of Lebanon. First of all, we think that's the best football in the state of Tennessee, top to bottom, as far as just numbers of programs that do well. I know there's other places in the state that have good programs, but you know, you want you want uh, as many local area kids as you can. And so, if we do go to Georgia or Alabama or wherever those got to be really good guys that we bring in because we want the base to be around here. But um, getting that and, and having that whole experience, it does let you be a little more picky because hopefully, you know, I think I told you this at the beginning of, of the season with these last two recruiting classes we've had, if we can keep this core here, we can be more selective. And then you're just saying we need, you know, these certain positions instead of a bunch or a bunch, but, you know, we keep doing what we did Saturday. I don't think we'll have a problem keeping people. <laughs> Thomas Moore is next up on the schedule at Crestview Hills, Kentucky. I remember their quarterback is an Espinosa who played played high school football at Cookville right up the road. What about Thomas Moore coming up on Saturday? Same, same program that's been there last – even though they changed the – head, the head coach now is their defensive coordinator last year, so – Defensively, they're doing the same things, and they're really they're doing the same thing offensively as well. They just um, they're a solid football team. They they do things well. They're 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 not huge on defense, but they're coached up really well. They do what they're supposed to do, so they're always in the right spots. But um, they're not overly they're not overly big. Um, they don't have maybe as much speed on offense as some other – maybe even as Camel's Camel had a lot of speed on offense, but they do what they do well. And um, so it's – like every week, it's going to be a challenge. we got we got to be sound in everything we do to have a chance. Did you come out of the Campbellsville game relatively healthy? Uh, somewhat. The, you know, sadly, we, we lost uh, – Champ Ledden is done for the year uh, – he hurt his knee. It's not major, like a major knee injury, but he won't he won't heal in time to be back. So it kind of stinks for him, uh, just you know, because this this was it for him. Well, so, the vital guy in what and, you're and doing defensively, and he's a he's a workhorse. I mean, he's if we had 30 champs, would probably wouldn't have any yardage up against us because he plays so darn hard. So you know, that's a big. But we get. Um, Woodall back from this hand, he's going to be clubbed up, but he'll be able to play at linebacker. So it's a boost to have him back at linebacker, losing champ at linebacker. So um, he'll come back into it. And it's just, you know, we're getting into the seventh game of the season. So we got a, bu a bunch of bumps and bruises uh, of guys that got to play with a lot of soreness. But other than champ, we're, we're basically the same team that played last week. 12.30, I'm trying to think. Central, so it's 1.30 Eastern. 1.30 Eastern, 12.30 kick. Uh, will you leave Friday? Yeah, we'll leave Friday because it's we'll leave Friday because it's about four and a half hours away. So Friday night. Yeah, we'll leave Friday because it's it's about four and a half hours away. So it's almost Cincinnati. It, it, it's, it's on the, you know, the south side of the river there that separates Kentucky and uh, Ohio. And we stay right at the – it's called – or it is Cincinnati's airport, but it's actually in Kentucky. It's on the south side of the river, so we'll stay right by the uh, the airport, and then our hotel from from uh, Thomas Moore's like 
10 minute drive so it's not very far but definitely go up friday night just so we don't have to get up so early and go for the game tim congratulations again record setting performance 65 points the most for a cumberland football team since the program was rebooted in 1990 uh Carry on, keep that thing going. We we hope to. We definitely hope to. It, that, it'd be fun to do that the rest of the year. I tell you that. <laughs> hey, good talking to you. Thanks for the visit. Thank you. Go Phoenix. Tim Mathis, head coach of Cumberland University, with us here on the second segment of Coach's Night Out. We'll be back to close the program out with Trey Eric, offensive coordinator at Wilson Central, after these words. Square Social, 145 Public Square, Lebanon, open for lunch and dinner seven days a week. Thanks to Kyle and Cody for allowing us this venue for so many years. Advantage Home Solutions, LLC, Donnie Self and Rob Painter, Kenny Salas and the hometown team of Keller Williams Realty, THW Insurance Services, LLC, Cumberland University Athletics, and DT McCall and Sons, Lebanon, Carthage, Lafayette, Franklin, and Cookville our sponsors for this program. Thanks so much. We've got a very light schedule of high school football games coming up this week. Thursday night, October 13th, Republic plays at Mount Juliet, senior night for the Bears. Friday, DCA at Mount Juliet Christian. Friendship Christian is on the road. They go to Ottawa to play East Hamilton, a 4A school. So a very light schedule. Everybody is out. I am very fortunate to have a guy who is comfortable in this kind of situation. <laughs> Trey Eric, <coughs> offensive coordinator at Wilson Central. Good to have you here Thank tonight, you. pal. Hey, I can personally speak uh, for the cheeseburger and onion rings I just polished off, and it was delicious. Good good eats oh, here at good Town eats. Square Social. Good eats. Let, let me talk a little bit about this, this Wilson Central football team, Trey. You've had your struggles – but you've won games in the region. You're, you're three yeah. and two in the region, and you've got yourselves right in the thick of, of getting into the playoffs not, and having a good spot. Yeah, not only have we won, but we've won games against teams with winning records. Yes, sir. And, uh, man, I couldn't be more proud of, the, of this group of young men that we're coaching. Um, we went through a lot of adversity early on in our season, and, and these young men could have mailed it in. They could have said, you know, we've had enough. Uh, let's just finish the year and let's go. But they didn't do that. Um, uh, they responded uh, to the challenge. Uh, they gathered around each other. They started playing for one another. 
looking out for one another. And it's it's just been amazing to see what they've accomplished just to this point. You run up 39 points against Station Camp, and, and you're the guy over there calling the plays. And I made some <laughs> notes. 63 offensive snaps, 298 yards, 20 first downs. I, I, this maybe this is a dumb question to ask you what was working. It sounds like everything was working. Uh, well, and that's the thing. If you go back earlier in the year, uh, you didn't want to be known as the guy that was calling the plays because we weren't scoring points. But um, I think that's a big uh, – tribute to our head coach as well uh you know meeting with him uh he was very supportive and, and we just made the decision we had to stay the course uh and just do what we do so you know we just responded by supporting our kids supporting our coaches and you know just keep doing what we're doing and um you know finally you know we we've been able to do some things we hadn't been able to do uh earlier in the year we're finishing drives picking up those first downs uh, staying ahead of the sticks, uh, and, and we, you know, we've preached that to our players how important that is uh, to stay out in front of those down markers. They've listened. They've done a tremendous job. Well, if you can avoid a crummy play on first down, you've got a shot at, yes. at, at moving the football. Four yards is still a good play in this game, and uh, and this game is still all about field position. Um, and then the last two games, uh, defensively. Uh, Coach Devman's dialed up. He's kept us in good field position for the offense. Friday night was a testament to that. We kept station camp pinned on their own goal line. Uh, that resulted in a safety for the defense, uh, and it resulted in us continuing to have uh, good field position, being able to take the ball, drive it back down in there, uh, and then our kicker. Our kicker was absolutely phenomenal. Esteban Hutardo. Yes. Did, I mean – he Field goals, perfect. punting. Yeah, perfect there, perfect punting, perfect PATs. And, um, you know, there's there's a lot of kids we can recognize. One that I've really got to is our freshman fullback who probably weighs 135 pounds soaking wet, uh, Antoine McCathan. I, I, I made notes of this. Yeah. 20 carries, 101 yards, and he's not very big. He's not, <laughs> he's not very big at all. And uh, – are you running him dives, traps, that yeah, kind of thing I mean, in he there? Took it, he took it into the teeth of the defense. He ran the ball hard. Uh, he came out a little bruised, a little uh, gimpy with an ankle, uh, but he continued to play throughout the entire game. And just, you know, you can preach toughness all you want to, uh, but you recognize it when you see it. And that young man was just so tough uh, in, in the way he approached the game. And he gave us that presence in between the tackles. And, and that old saying holds true, if you control off tackle, you can still win. How do you make the decision that this ninth grader was ready for his shot? And, uh, well, Antoine's sophomore. Sophomore, I'm sophomore. sorry. So, well, you? we do have a freshman that's dressing with us now too, but uh, the decision was really kind of made for us uh, when we lost Ethan Kimes, um, an upperclassman. We lost him to Who Andrew. I thought was kind of an X factor. Oh. We'll play him on the wing, slam him up in there, a good he, blocker on the edge. Good blocker. He he filled – that was the thing we, we laughed about right up until the point he got hurt. He was a backup quarterback, backup fullback, started at the wing, starter on defense. I mean, Ethan, just a phenomenal young man, filled so many roles for us. Then he went down. Then Tavin Harden went, went down. And uh, so, you know, Antoine had to – had to Uh, he got his opportunity, and he made the most of it Friday night. When you spread the wealth offensively like you're able to in the Wilson Central offense, Trey, Newble We've been very fortunate. We lost our quarterback in the in the Lebanon game early in the year. Uh, there we had another sophomore young man who has stepped up, who has taken the reins, and he continues. Uh, Gavin Mayfield continues to get better every week. So he, he allows, and it's kind of sitting at a card table. He's the dealer back there, uh, and so you know it's it's his job 
uh, when that play is called to make sure that, that we, you know, keep this spread out. Uh, and I think it does make it difficult on a defense when you've got Mario uh, and you've got Jason at those wings, not very big in stature. Both of them extremely athletic, good receivers, can run the ball uh, and do the things that they do. It has been uh, – these last two weeks have really been a pleasure to see how these young men have progressed. And Gavin completed seven out of 11, not for a lot of yards, for 39 yards, but you're not asking him to be Joe Namath. No. You're, you're asking him to keep the defense honest – and, and take that, advantage of what you get and, and talk about that and, a little bit. Well, would. when you've got running backs like we do, that then the play action game definitely comes into uh comes into play. And he's been he's been so coachable. Uh the one thing we all say about Gavin is how coachable he is from one week to the next. So and we tell him every quarterback would love to have those huge stats. Sure. Uh the week before he was perfect in the passing game. I think he was six for six or 135 the week before. And here's what we told him. Those games are going to come uh, when you play like he did this Friday night. Weren't deep passes, but they were passes that allowed us to move the chains. Uh, and everything that we do offensively is predicated on hold on to the football, move the chains, pick up first downs. And then we want to try to walk away with some type of points when we get into the when we get in that red zone. And I don't think that really makes us any different than any other coaching staff other than how we go about getting those points. Well, and the fact that you're – your numbers because of injury are, are way down. You got like a mass unit, and Brad <laughs> has talked about referring to this bunch as the dirty 30, yeah. high 30s, maybe low 40s. <laughs> Again, these guys had a, several opportunities to cash it uh, in, that's, and, and they haven't done that. No, they haven't. And that's when you know you got a special group of young men that you're coaching. Um, after the Green Hill loss, well, we came back. Young men were challenged uh, to step their game up, step their play up. Uh, coaches knew we had to prepare better. I mean, it was across the board uh, and just couldn't be. Uh, they had a choice at that moment right there. They could have said, you know, we have no part of this uh, and we'll finish the season and go home. But that, that's not been the mentality. Uh, their practices have gotten better every week. They've worked harder every week. Um, and that – that in of it was mind blowing to me. If you've been around teams that maybe didn't work as hard after right. they faced adversity, not this group. Uh, you know, Friday night uh, with with Antoine, that that was our fourth F this year. Young man stepping up, and and they've done that. Uh, the coaches continue to work hard. Uh, that, that may be some of the thing that kind of get this coaching staff gets along so well. Uh, we laugh. Uh, we have a good time. We look out for each other. A lot of that starts with a head man oh, and with, let me with Brad, as, as good a human being as you're going to find uh, with a whistle around his neck. Well, everybody that's been around our program or been around me very long knows how I feel about Brad Dedman. I mean, he's not a friend. He's my brother. And uh, we're like family. And, uh, you know, he, he, he sets the tone for that. He's not overbearing. Um, but don't mistake his not being overbearing for not being, you know, he has a, he has a fight in there. That red hair is, a, is there for a reason. He does such a good job leading us uh, and pointing us, not really pointing us in the right direction, but walking along it with us. Uh, he's out there when there's work to be done. He's out there working too. So, you know, we have a great leader. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that that never gets underestimated uh, because in this football program at Wilson Central, uh, we understand we put kids first and we look out for them uh, as young men, as students, uh, and somewhere down the line, we look out for them as football players. He does a great – if we have a young man that can be recruited, he does a great job getting that material out there uh, as well. And I think as long as we continue down that path to where we put players first and kids first, we're going to be fine. Off this week – Stewart, <laughs> Stewart's Creek is up next. Right. Then you've got what really boils down to be a huge one at Hillsboro, October 28th. Again, back in the region. If you can win that football game, you're going to be four and two in the region, and you'll take your shot against anybody yeah. the way the thing all shakes out. Hey, that's we know that we, we do have Stewart's Creek, a really good football team. We have them coming up. But like you said, then on the 28th, it's for all the marbles right there. We got to get on those buses and and go to Hillsboro 
Uh, and if I know this group, if I can say one thing about this group of young men that we're coaching, they'll be ready. And, uh, you know, we've stared down two teams these last couple of weeks that have been bigger than we are. Their numbers have been better. Um, and, and just to be honest, I think it shocked them a little bit the way our kids came out and played them. Uh, and that's a testament to our coaching staff and these young men as well. Well, and, and I know the support from the Wilson Central community, the, the school, yeah. they're all in. Oh, absolutely. And the student, student section, you know, everybody, they, uh, they're, they're nuts during <laughs> games like that. The Blue Zoo is a special group of, of young people. And, you know, we don't have that large town that surrounds right. it, like a Mount Juliet, Green Hill, or Lebanon. Um, uh, we have a lot of storage facilities out there, I think, a lot of warehouses. So, you know, it is a tight-knit group that's there uh, because that's all we have out there is each other. And uh, we have a great principal. Uh, we have a new principal at Wilson, Wilson Central, Dr. Jennifer Ainty, and uh, who supports us. Who yeah. has been there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, she, she knows what it's yeah. about. And, uh, you know, we have assistant principals like Jason Franklin who was there when the doors opened. So, you know, we have support uh, there. And, uh, you know, we just continue to work and, and strive. We have, we have goals and, and we have a mission, and, and uh, we're going to continue down that path. Um, and at the end of the day, I, I think we're starting to reap some of the rewards of that. Does football kind of shut down this week? Do you, I, I know Lebanon has done that, Watertown has yeah, done I that. Yeah, I think Coach Devin may – you know, in years past, uh, we've come in for a couple of days this week. Coach Devin said, let's shut it down, let's get out of here. Uh, so we've been completely shut down this week, and uh, I think it was much needed. Uh, we have we have so many. Uh, we had the big injuries, but there's a lot of little nagging injuries that now these kids have had a chance just to get away from it, get healed up, get re-energized, uh, and and do some of those things. So we're uh, we miss them. That's for sure. We hope that they're safe and, and not doing anything to uh, you know get hurt or anything. But but it has been good to shut them down this week. Trey Eric is a football lifer. <laughs> I, I, I met you when you were working at Beach. Yeah, and you have you have stayed the course. You're a football coach. This, this this is what you do. And uh, and it's funny you say that because I've got the real boss sitting back here behind me. But you know it's what I love. Um, you know what's the old saying? If you do what you love, you never work a day in your yeah. life. And um, I've been fortunate. Uh, I've been part of a lot of really good programs, worked for a lot of really good head coaches. Uh, but at the end of the day, we all have to figure out what our why is. Why do we do this? And for me, it's as, as we travel down this path, uh, that when I run into a young man who wants to introduce his family to me, uh, introduce his players to me, I was just texting him with a former player back there before I, uh, before I came on here. That's why I do what I do. Uh, you know, especially when they're going through some hard times in their life, they can be reminded, hey, look back, you yeah. accomplished this. So there's nothing that you're going to face right now. Uh, and if nothing else, if we don't do, you know, a lot of our guys that we coach are not going to go to college. Um, they're not going to go as to be a, a college football player. Right. They, they'll go on and, but, you know, we want them to be good husbands, good fathers, good members of our community. Um, and that when people, uh, Coach Mathis has, has, at Cumberland has made the statement to me before that when he gets a young man from Wilson Central, he knows his grades are not going to be an issue. To a lot of people, that may not be, you know, that, but to us at Wilson Central, that's important. Sure. That a college coach can say to us, we know when we get one of your players that these things are not going to be an issue. And uh, that makes your chest stick out a little bit and you feel good about what you're doing. And, um, uh, Every year, and, and just here in Wilson County, I mean, football is so – it's so much fun to me, too. Uh, you look at the coaches that we have in this county, the teams that we have in this county, uh, and the success that those coaches are seeing right now, Coach Gentry at Lebanon, and what his team is accomplishing right now. I mean, that's awesome. And our Coach Perry at Mount Juliet, Coach Crouch at, you know, Green Hill, Coach Webster at, at Watertown, all of these men are great men, great people to associate yourself with. And you wouldn't mind your son playing for any right. of them. And that's the best that, that can be said about that. Trey, always good talking always to you. Always good to be Thanks here. for filling in. I called Brad during the week. He says, hey, I'm not going to be able to be there. He's making a Bucky's run this week. So. <laughs> call, call Trey. And I knew Trey Eric would be good for 
10, 12 good solid minutes <laughs> here on the show. Thanks, my friend. Hey, I appreciate glad it. Glad to be here, Tommy. Thank you. Trey Eric, offensive coordinator at Wilson Central, as we wrap up the week nine show. Don't forget, Mount Juliet's at home Thursday against Republic. DCA is at Mount Juliet Christian on Friday. And Friendship Christian goes to Ottawa at East Hamilton on Friday night. That's all the football. Hey, for all the folks here at Town Square Social, for Justin behind the camera, I'm Tommy Bryan. I will talk to you later.